people ask me, what's the lifespan of a bee? It's a complicated question because bees don't really have a lifespan, they have a mileage. Most bees will put on 800 kilometers in three weeks, if it's in June, when the days are long. And the bees fly themselves to death. It takes about 800 kilometers, and when their wings wear out, they die. They're like a cheap knockoff that you build it and it's fast and then it expires and that's how the hive treats its bees. In June of 2019, I went to Prince Edward Island for the first time in several years to visit my Uncle Stan. Stan is a beekeeper on PEI, the biggest on the island. I didn't know Stan very well, but when he would occasionally visit, I loved to hear about his work and ask how the bees are doing. That summer, I decided to visit him and film his work moving thousands of beehives into blueberry fields for pollination. This, as I learned, was a crucial part of beekeeping on PEI. Although the island is naturally isolated, foreign beehives are imported annually to pollinate blueberries. The hives coming in from out of province could expose the native bees to pests and diseases they would otherwise be safe from. This year, Stan is trying to prevent the introduction of a new pest, small hive beetle. He's taking the government to court over some of their import policies on foreign bees. Amidst the danger to the bees, Stan, at the age of 68, is trying to find a way to retire. But he hasn't yet found a safe way to do so. Small hive beetle larvae may cause severe damage in honey supers that are left unattended. Honey must be extracted and stored without delay to avoid damage. Small hive beetle can also aid in the horizontal transmission of other bee hazards such as fungal spores, bacteria, protozoa, and viruses. The ability to pollinate would likely not be impacted unless there was a severe infestation resulting in the abandoning of the hive by the bees. So they're saying you could have all those other effects, but as long as you can pollinate, oh yeah. And, he, and then, based on the above factors, the consequence assessment for beekeepers ranges from low to moderate. After all those things that they can do in the beehive, low to moderate. And then, for blueberry growers, small hive beetle will not impact the ability of the bees to pollinate blueberry fields. Well, if they fucking well die, then... What isn't that an impact on their uh, on their pollination? They don't. It doesn't matter to them uh, what happens to the bees. They've got their government, their cushy government job. 
I, I'm still writing my court case. But yeah, I am taking it to court. Right? My name is Stan Sandler. I'm a beekeeper, and I've been a beekeeper for 45 years. I have half the bees in Prince Edward Island and have had for the past 20 years. There's 50,000 on average in one beehive, so 2,000 beehives comes to 100 million. No strikes, no pension plan. I had beehives as soon as I moved onto the farm. First thing, I kept uh, other animals and I made most of my income from milking cows. But not too long after I started, the blueberry farmers started wanting beehives for pollination. Then they wanted more and more, so I started to expand. I gradually built up and a lot of the build up wasn't because of honey. You could then and still can make a living from keeping bees, in Prince Edward Island anyway, from honey alone. Not an easy living. And gradually I, I found I couldn't keep cows and bees and pigs. It was too much. So I first sold the pigs and then later on I sold the cows. I invested that in more beehives. After that I had a lot of bees. Then I had to have hired labor because 500 beehives is about all one person can take care of. To make up for winter losses, Stan and the Bee Cowboy split hives early in the season, creating two hives from one. At this point in the year, Stan buys new queens, each of them arriving in a wooden cage with several guard bees from Hawaii. Found another emergency cell, but it doesn't look like it have, has anything either. Oh, here's another one too. Scared of? <laughs> I thought we were supposed to be delicate at this workplace, man. Yeah. It's like smack them gently. 
smack him, Jeremy. Yeah. Right. Bees are adapted to pollinate flowers, and in return, the flowers give them nectar. So blueberries have a lot of small flowers. The island's not that big, it's a million acres, but the blueberry industry went crazy on PEI. The government promoted it as a great new agricultural crop for people to go into, and people cleared land. There's now thousands of acres in PEI, and the amount of hives they need is more than what we've ever had in PEI. And we could keep more. There's not a huge incentive for beekeepers to keep more because we're at about the limit of what the island can have and still produce honey crop. You guys already had separated? Yeah, we put these in a few days before. Because the queen can't fit in these, I guess, fit through these holes. Mm. Whereas the rest of them can. Uh, right now, we have queen excluders in, so it traps the queen in one box. So we're going through and looking for eggs. Whatever box has eggs, she's in, so we leave behind. And then we can take the other one of the other boxes away as a split put a queen in it in a new yard and then hopefully it worked out. <clears throat> There's a bit of honey up here. Some capped honey. In that back corner? Yeah, right here. This is honey and this is the brood capping. That's just wax. This has fibers in it so it can breathe. So the bees don't suffocate while they're in there. hard, it takes them a while to get through it, so it kind of gives them a little passageway. And that's just to give them time to get used to the scent and the pheromone of the queen. Right. So just like, have you loosened it right away? Yes, and then they would just attack her. How can you tell it's weak just from just opening? Just because of the amount of frames they take up as a whole. Hmm. Usually they, you want them to be six frames of bees usually, but this is only like four. So I'll tighten it to keep warm. So we'll investigate and see. It's like a 24 day cycle. And the bee only lives for about a month or 40 days, so it's like mm -hmm. every month is completely new, like hive, mm -hmm. except for the queen. Um, these are the male bees, the drone eggs. And then these would be the females all here. That bee is kind of helping them. slowly eating at the wax. I think bees are helping them a little bit.
when a bee goes through its life, it goes through all the jobs in the hive according to which glands develop. And it starts out as a housekeeping bee and then becomes a, a nurse bee feeding the young brood and then its wax secreting cells develop and it becomes a comb building bee and its sting develops later and it becomes a guard bee and the last job is a forager either for pollen or for nectar depending on what the hive is short of and so their wings wear out in three weeks at the most and so they die are bees normally subject to? One brood disease that's a virus called sac brood. And then there's chalk brood, which is a fungus disease of the brood. Two bacterial diseases, European fowl brood and American fowl brood. The one main thing to prevent them is to keep your varroa mite levels down. The fact that the varroa mite is a parasite that bites the bee it, if it moves from one location on the bee to another, then there's an open sore, or the, the varroa mite may have the virus on its jaws. Ever since we've had varroa mites, that's been an essential part of beekeeping. If you don't keep your varroa mite levels down, your bees will die. Tonight, Stan and his crew will start the week-long process of moving his bees into blueberry fields for pollination. After that, he'll have to decide if he wants to build his numbers back up to what they were last year. For now, Stan shows me the barn next to his house. It's filled to the brim with empty hive boxes from previous seasons. So what's this you wanted to show me? Well, the, we were talking about disease. So this is a pile of uh, boxes that came from, from dead outs. You can see it goes halfway across there, the uh, pole barn, not quite. This barn is full. I, I won't have to decide until after blueberries. The main time I'll have to decide is when we move them out. So that'll be the end of uh, June. And by then, uh, my legal challenge in the court may be going ahead or or else when they give us permission we'll start splitting them to make up for our winter loss try and build up again if I if I build up again depends on the politics of it whether I have it's uh, it's one thing to take a hit from Mother Nature that you can't avoid. You can accept that. Mother Nature gives you some good times and she gives you some bad times. That's, that's the way it is. I accept that. But taking a hit from uh, the politics of an agriculture industry, agribusiness, and their uh, ridiculous demands. That's harder to take. That's avoidable. In 2012, in Nova Scotia, they discovered tracheal mites. I don't know how much of my loss last winter is due to tracheal mites because they're microscopic. They live inside the airways of the bee. You can't see them, except with a very strong microscope, you see the shadow of them through the wall of the trachea. So we knew any hives coming from Nova Scotia that year were suspect. Those bees did bring in tracheal mites. 
So I'd filed a, a judicial review of that. But that time it was pretty obvious that the minister had erred. He made an order allowing them to come in when it was obvious that uh, it wasn't safe. Now a judge did find that uh, he did do that illegally, but I couldn't prove any damages and he ruled that I was out of time, that I had waited too long to make the claim. It took me a while to get all the information together and learn how to do, how to do a claim. And now in Ontario, they have another exotic pest, which is in the bee health regulations again. This one is small hive beetle. They're different than tracheal mites. They're big enough to see. Only they're hard to see in a beehive. And they're not just for one year. Once they come in, we can't eradicate them. They're here forever. They're fast, very well armored, so bees can't sting them. And they're tricky. Once the larvae hatch, the bees have trouble dealing with them in there. They'll go through the brood, they'll go through the honey. And the bees may just leave the hive. They may figure, we can't deal with this. And the larvae slime the honey. They have uh, yeasts and things that cause the honey to just ooze and run out of the hive. It's, it's unusable for human consumption. It's unusable even for the bees. No other place in the world allows the importation of hives from an area that's small hive beetle positive to a small hive beetle negative. Only one other place has ever done that, and that was New Brunswick. And in 2017, they infected themselves. And PEI is headed the same way. And so I don't know about uh, whether I want to build up or what my future is in beekeeping doesn't encourage you to want to invest in beekeeping if they're just going to keep doing this. Right now it's uh, the fruit bloom. While cherries are out, uh, apple trees are about to open, and the blueberries are about 10 or 15 percent of the blossom is open. And that's the perfect time to move the bees in. Dan, should I set this rope a little closer to the hive, or? You, the only way, it's actually, it's a long enough rope. Okay. That's the only way you can do it. Stan and his crew will have to move hundreds of hives each night this week. At the same time, about 5,000 hives are coming into the province from Ontario, okay. doubling the island's bee population. All good to go? The crew splits up into three groups, and I go with Stan and Elijah on the first night. It was Elijah's first time moving bees as well.
in a beehive of 30,000 bees, only 10,000 of the 30,000 are actually foraging. The other two-thirds are working inside the beehive. They don't fly at night, and so we have to wait till they're home. Otherwise, we'd lose all the field bees. And we've waited until the berries are five to 10% in flower, and now they are. And we're the bee cowboys, and we're rounding them up and moving them out. Draw high. If the border was cut off, there would be more bees kept here because blueberries do need bees. The blueberry companies would either keep bees themselves or make arrangements for local beekeepers to keep enough bees for their pollination. It might be more expensive. They might have to pay a little more for renting hives. Yes. The purpose of a Department of Agriculture should primarily be to protect the plants and animals in the province from diseases, that should be their primary purpose. But it's not, it's economics. And it's uh, the big blueberry companies that have provided employment, they got a lot of clout on this island. Whether we need as many blueberries as we have, I don't know, that's, that's a different question. But right now, we do have a big acreage. People have already put in the effort to turn a field into a blueberry field. You don't do that in one or two years. It takes five, 10 years before you get it into a really nice blueberry field. People have already put the time and effort into developing quite a few thousand acres, so they need pollination. Last fall, we wanted to move a yard of bees away from a wet area and you were with me, weren't yeah. you? And we used rope to the, right across <laughs> to the other side of the field, to trees. It was, we had uh, probably 400 feet of rope. We had so much rope, this isn't gonna reach. Well, just get another rope, maybe. a.m. by the time Stan and Elijah finish their work. Between the three trucks, the cowboys have moved hundreds of hives and have about 1,500 more to go. It was too cold for the bees to fly that night. Instead, they crawl clustered together, vibrating to stay warm. They buzz loudly, pissed off at being disturbed at this time. It smelled strange, and Brian told me that was the smell of bee venom in the air.
head back to Montreal in the middle of moving week. Stan tells me his court date is delayed, so I return to PEI a few months later. By now, blueberry season is over, and Stan has decided to build up back to last year's numbers, despite the uncertainty of the judge's decision. Now, later in the season, with more time on their hands, the bee cowboys can raise queen bees themselves. sells it just like this. Like in June, they'll split some bees away from their queen, and the bees will quickly realize they are queenless. Instead of placing a new queen in this split, they'll place a row of handmade cells inside. They transplant these larvae inside their truck, where wind and bees can't disturb them. Yeah, that's like the newly hatched larva that's just has a little bit of royal jelly kind of looks milky around it and yeah. then we scoop that up and then take it and set it down into one of these cells yeah it's very very hard to see even with your eyes sometimes yeah. so then we take that and put it back into the hive once we finish filling this bar and that bar and then they'll start feeding the larvas more royal jelly and she'll turn into a queen if it takes. Not all of them work out though. As long as we give them adequate supplies, they just want to make as many queens as they can. Because naturally the first one that will work will go and take care of the rest, like she'll sting the rest of them. But we just don't let her do that. make the new queen smell like the old queen a little bit.
just drives the new crane crazy. The bees are less likely to sting her. fall, Stan and his crew finally harvest the honey for the season. They collect frames filled with honey from each hive, removing as many bees as they can in the process. At the same time, they inspect hives for varroa mites, small hive beetles, and other pests, and wrap up the hives for the winter. By this time, the blueberry plants have been harvested. The fields become a sea of bright red. This is the thing about uh, being a bee cowboy now. It's not just about moving bees from pasture to pasture where there's food for them. We make our living pollinating blueberries. They're called wild blueberries. They're anything but wild. They're completely managed with chemicals. If blueberries need bees, it's harder for beekeepers to keep them and they don't want to invest in beekeeping because it's no longer uh, profitable dealing with all these diseases, pesticides, it's going to affect blueberries. Not negligible or low, it's going to majorly affect them. Lucas tests several hives for varroa mites while the rest of the team collects honey frames. To do this, he takes a jar full of bees from a hive and shakes them up in a liquid solution. This kills the bees but separates the mites from them. So those are the actual mites? These are the mites, yeah, you can see them here. But like you can kind of see the little lags there. So each one of those little red dots is a mite. In comparison to us, it's like us walking around with a cat in our back all the time. Like this is one of the worst, this is the worst year I've seen.
still drones. There's one. So they don't have a sting, the males. They have their forked penis. The two claspers are for hooking into the queen while they're in flight and mating. And then once they mate, they're paralyzed like that. And they fall to earth. That's it. They've been lucky. They've had a chance to mate. Most of them will never get a chance to mate. We have 900 billion, but with only a million neurons, they can control all their body functions, are able to learn, live in a society, uh, have a, a map of two mile radius and be able to fly out and come home. They could back to their hive every time. So they use their million neurons far more efficiently than we use our billion. people ever got the impression that bees were aggressive animals. They're incredibly gentle. I'm stealing their year's worth of work here.
see here. <laughs> And with that, the last of the honey has been collected from the hives. Almost all the bee cowboys have some kind of relationship to each other outside of work. Yeah, they're all related. There's Brian, then there's Lucas, his best friend. And now this year, Lucas's sister, and she's going with Brian's brother. And Brian's girlfriend is Sarah. And her mother is working here now. And her son has worked here for four years, I think. And then there's Steve. His mother is married now to Brian's father. Cowboy number one. Oh! Bang, <laughs> Ken is always number one. The cowboy he was hired. number two. He doesn't have his fingerprint on yeah. it today. Oh, Cleaner today. <laughs> they didn't find me a key. Like Number two tries hard. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. He's got. Oh, he, you're just knocking. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was just gonna nothing. say. He sat around. He's got a grin on. He sat around writing material <laughs> all day for us. Then, then he got nothing. You can see it on his teeth. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Standing right. <laughs> 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 well, all we gotta do is crack open one of those drums. That one's crazy. Apple juice. Not juice anymore. Not anymore. You want to give that to your kid? Well, that's what. If I was your kid, you could give it to me. <laughs> Have a good weekend, guys. Well, I've beekeeped in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Chile. And I've visited beekeepers in uh, quite a few of them in Venezuela, Panama, and Guatemala. But in the Philippines, I did three years of projects. My plan this winter is to go to Ethiopia and volunteer on a beekeeping project. It's a co-op, a beekeeper's cooperative and uh, they have uh, over 20,000 beekeepers. <laughs> and then, and I'll be thinking about how to get out of this. I mean, I, I love uh, the bees, but it's, I want to retire from it and not have it, uh, not have the stress from it. It's stressful trying to keep them in good shape. My workers should be able to uh, handle it. They've worked with bees long enough, but they're young and they've never run a business. And I tried to get the government to fund them so that they could buy me out and run it as a co-op. But that was the reason. The government didn't want to lend the money. They said they don't have any business experience. These are the most experienced uh, beekeepers almost uh, on PEI. anybody else on the island or otherwise potentially who could buy you out? There's nobody interested that I know of. My last resort, like I could sell the hives off island to New Brunswick, but there's quite a few people make their livelihood here, working here. Yeah. 
they've been good workers. I don't want to screw them over by selling their livelihood out from under them. So I, I think the, I, I may get a business plan together yet, and maybe I'll just uh, get the, to pay me off over time. It's kind of risky, because they could lose everything. It was, it was looking bad. We recovered from it, but it wasn't easy. And uh, I worked hard at it. I'm not saying, I didn't do, like I don't, I'm not out in the field all the time, but I'm doing logistics and stuff and trying to keep vehicles together and ordering things. And it, it was a struggle to recover from losing so many hives in the winter. The uh, reasonable thing is to keep pests out. <laughs> Eleven more days I go to court. We'll see what they say. She's grown strong. 